I'd like a drink. Ah, uh, okay. Gonna have to make it a quick one. I'm closing in five minutes. Well, then double bourbon on the rocks. And a picture of this lovely young lady in a bikini. Well, you should have been here an hour ago. You could have taken one yourself. Oh, I would love to have been here. You know who that was, sir? No, Chuck. I don't know who it was. Who was it? That was the governor. Shit. I had no idea. Fidelity works in mysterious ways, Jack. How's that, Beamer? Damore and Schultz showed up early, demanded the pictures of his wife from Keith. Nancy almost had to call the police. Guy's up there jumping chairs. <laughs> I'll take care of it later. Don't worry about it. Rent's due tomorrow, and it's gonna be hell to pay if he leaves. Beamer, he's under contract.
You're absolutely right. I wouldn't give her another thought. You know something? You're okay, Mr. Kelman. Call me Jack, said Apple. I know a very good divorce attorney. He used to be a judge. Uh, he's top dollar, but uh, he'll make sure she'll never even joke about cheating again. You know what I mean? Pearl the Rainer. I was hoping Mr. Kellerman could take care of this personally, but... Never screw with an Irishman, Nancy. What are you, crazy? Dumbass. All over my desk. You're gonna owe me for that, pal. Forget it. You just shouldn't have... Yeah, Nancy, what is it? Okay, put him on. Hey, Charlie, how are you? What's going on? What? You kid. I'll be there in two minutes. Huh? Okay, see you. Everything okay? Uh... No. They just found the governor's son dead uh, under the river bridge. My God. Uh, I'll send you a bill. Uh, Jack Kellerman, here to see Chief Faulkner. Chief! 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 Yeah! Yeah, let him through! Okay. Thank you. so good. Yeah. Why'd you call me here? Look, uh, we need all the local help we can get. Besides, I haven't seen you for a while. Been behind a desk too long. Let me guess, you should have stayed captain. You got that right. So what do you got? Fisherman found him about an hour ago. All washed up, if you know what I mean. Sure. The governor? Well, he's been notified, but so far no word. The kid's got a sister, though. Yeah? Where's she? Right over there. You've talked to her? Yeah, but she doesn't know anything. How'd she get here so quick anyway? Private playing field about 15 minutes ago. Look, Irish, duty calls.
the present Ain't no present like you I got it made in the shade And nobody's played it through I've neglected to uh, introduce our new caddy. This is the uh, this is the lovely kitten. This is my newest addition to the club. What do you think? I think she's going to make me a million bucks. What do you say? Gentlemen. Sweetheart, I think these gentlemen owe me thirty dollars each. Would you mind collecting? Okay, up, gentlemen. Look, you know, man, I'm getting tired of this shit. You know, you win every time. You bring a chick and you screw up her game. Hey, know? come on, Jack. Next time you're at the club, the drinks are on me. Okay. Now you're on talking. House. All right. Speaking of drinks, I'm going to have one. You want to join me at the club? Uh, nah, nah, Chuck. Uh, I believe I better pass. I'm on duty in an hour. You sure? Yeah, yeah. Better not, huh? How about you, Jack? I'll be up there in a minute. Chuck. Okay. Take See care, Chuck. Huh? Thanks for the money. See, See you tomorrow. Yeah, right. Hey, Jack, I can't find my damn keys. You seen them? Right here, Chief. Oh, thank God. Fell out of the car. Look like I can get. See you around, buddy. A year ago today. What's that? The governor's son. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Geez, I wonder what made that kid get soused and do a thing like that. I've always had doubts, you know. It could have been anything. Depression. Boredom. Women trouble. I don't know. Been thinking about it for a year. Yeah, but listen, don't think too much about it, huh? I know how you damned investigators think. Yeah, you're all hopeless cynics. It never added up, wasn't handled properly. Look, Jack, you got a good business. Why in the hell you want to screw up your life by going around saying that somebody threw that kid off that thing? You 
got a point, you know. Uh, it's your department. Damn right. Hey, hey, look. look. I got a big press conference tomorrow down at City Hall. Why don't you come down for a while? Can't do it. I gotta be in court all day. The most vicious divorce trial I've ever been involved with. I'm not looking forward to it. Ah, what do you mean? Big time dick like you lives in the courtroom. Not this one. Come by tomorrow. It'll be a circus. Yeah, I'll see about it. Look, I gotta get. All right. See you, Chief. Yeah, take care. Hey, Irish. Don't let me catch you lying on the stand, you hear me? I don't lie, and lay off the Irish bit. My family's Dutch. Dutch, Get Irish. Get out of here. What the hell's the difference? Hey, Chief. What are you doing here? I thought you were going to work. Couldn't find my damn keys. Oh. Jack. Chuck. How are you? Good. Sit down. I got a joke for you. Can I get you a drink? Yeah, Debbie, let me have a wild turkey. Okay, it's like this. This guy goes in a bar, right? He orders a drink. And he drinks it down. And he orders another drink. He drinks, and he drinks, and he drinks. He looks around and says, whoops, I'm drunk. Uh, I don't know what's coming <laughs> No, you don't, Keith. That's the beauty of it. You'll love this. And so now, he looks around the room. He sees a beautiful woman sitting next to him. Beautiful. He starts to pan and tilt on her skirt, you know what I mean. So she looks at him and says, hey, what are you looking at? He says, well, you know, in his drunken state, I wish you'd just look at her. She leans back and she crosses her legs and says, well, what do you think about that, you old geezer? And he goes... <laughs> huh? Oh, that, yeah, Nancy. There's a Miss Camille Chambers here to see you. Who? The governor's daughter. Uh... Show her in. Beamer, get in here! Yeah. Uh, get in here. Sit down. It's the governor's daughter. Hey, lady, lady. Sit down. You will both act loyally. Where are your jackets? Oh, I don't know. Down my eyes. Open the door for her. There she is. Hello. Uh, Miss Chambers, how do you do? Good to meet you. These, this is, these are my associates, uh, Roy Keeb, Robert Tate. Sit down. Pull up a chair for the lady, will you, Beamer? Thank you. Well, uh, Ms. Chambers, uh, what can I do for you? Mr. Kellerman, you were at my brother's murder scene, weren't you? The yeah. murder? I have reason to believe my brother was murdered. Uh, in all honesty, Miss Chambers, I'm not the person you should be talking to about this. Do you mean the police? I've been to them 20 times this past year. They think I'm crazy. You were a policeman once, weren't you? Yes. Well, find my brother's murderer. Why me, Miss Chambers? I don't understand. To be honest, you're the first investigators let me through the front door. You know the area, and you were at the scene. What makes you so certain he was murdered? I don't, uh... Well, I have reason to believe that my father's in danger, and so am I. Well, it has been a year. I mean, you know, Mr. something's going to happen. It was... I'm rich. Very rich. <clears throat> uh, like I was saying, I'll have uh, Nancy draw up the papers. I think that Keaton Beamer can take care of that. Uh, um, is it alright if we're alone? Sure thing. Uh, guys, do you mind? <clears throat> Mr. Kellerman, I think my father murdered my brother. <clears throat> What makes you think that? My brother was blackmailing my father in exchange for $20,000 a month. He would keep quiet about my father's various political evils. Such as? Bribing the state legislature, pension funds, free limo rides, free plane rides, 
with our money. Why did you tell me in front of my operatives that you thought he was in danger? I just want to keep this between us. I understand. Uh, well, I'll see what I can do about it, okay? Don't you need to know anything else? That's all for now. Uh, I'll call you first thing tomorrow, all right? And uh, just give Nancy your number where you're staying, and uh, she'll take care of it. Thank you so much, Mr. Palmer. Uh, call me Jack. Thanks, right? Jack. You bet. See you tomorrow. Keith. Yeah. Uh, get my lawyer on the horn and buzz me, would you, Beamer? Hey, boss. I'll have to spend another day with Miss Thornton and the milkman or whoever shows up. Sure. Not as a fruitcake. Miss Thornton? Yeah. No, <laughs> Miss Chambers. She thinks her father, the governor, killed his own son. <laughs> are you kidding me? Come on. It'd be worth taking a look into, though. Are you nuts? I might be. Look, she's rich. Trust me, she is rich. I mean, I've got too much financial responsibility in this office. What have we done in the last year? I mean, we're a waste rule. We don't do anything. Yeah. Now, yeah. I don't believe that crazy story any more than you do, or any more than Key Kane's got. Freak. Okay, maybe right. you got a point. I'll, uh, talk to him. I'll talk to Keith. I'll talk to Keith. All right? Yep. And tell Nancy not to admit just any nut off the street, even if they are related to the governor. Okay, boss. Glad you made it. Hi, Jack. Just have a couple of questions. Okay, great. Thanks. Would you, uh, you like some coffee? No, thanks. Are you, uh, <clears throat> in contact with your father? I've only spoken with him once since my brother's murder. Um, were you close to your brother? My mom died when I was six, and... The family hasn't been very close since then, but I really love my brother. Do you have some info for me to go over? I have anything you want. Family history, police records. Police records? Yes. My brother was arrested on several occasions for drugs. Where were you the night of the, um, incident? Atlanta. Your father? He was here. How do you know? Um, it seems my brother and my father had a terrible fight outside a local bar. It's all in here. How do you know that? I mean... Witness. I have a witness. Do the police know this? Of course they do. May I call you Camille? Yes, please do. Tell you what I'll do, Camille. I'll get together with Keaton Beamer tonight and uh, go over this information and I'll see what I can do. Sounds great. Now, uh, when can I meet with your father? My father? Um, <laughs> I don't think that's possible. You're accusing him of murder, Camille. I've been in this business a long time. I can tell things about people. Well, you can reach him at this number. This is his office number. All right. Well, uh, I'll get together with my cohorts tonight, and we'll get right on it. Okay. All right? You don't know how much this means to me, Jack. I'm just doing my job. Thanks. Hey, Doc. Get it? Yeah, I got it. What'd you think? I don't know. Do you see that guy? I don't know. You know, I've always wondered what it was that made people feel that all private investigators were lowlifes. It's because everybody thinks that we're in it for our own self gratification. This is simply untrue. First of all, they come to us because they're miserable. Secondly, that misery rubs off on you. We see so many truths about life that we end up the most miserable of all. People don't want to know the truth. 
And if they sense that you know the truth, they'll hate you. Because basically, they hate themselves. I figured I'd follow Camille a bit and see her daily routine and her habits. There was only one problem. She didn't have a routine. My pleasure, man. Can I buy a drink? No, thanks. I got some business I gotta take care of uh, maybe later. Okay, let me okay. know. Okay, good to see you. You too. Hey, Kellerman. Oh, hi, Amy. How are you? Good, good. You know you need an ID to be in here. Look at you. Still here, huh? Forever and always. Still trying to be Dick Tracy? It's better than being a cop. I brought you the usual. The double scotch. So back. It's on the house. Thank you. Thank Try you so much. You. you always take care of me. Yeah, come on around here, honey. Oh, babe, you want hot little number. You wear that. Listen, uh, you want to go out next weekend? Sure, I'd love to. Uh, give you a call to dinner or something. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Great, great, great. Okay. Let's jump around. Oh, yeah. Burn me on, kitten. Too much. No pain, baby. Come around here for me, honey. No pain, mama. Come on down a little closer and give old dad a kiss. No yeah, pain, that's baby. right, a little closer. Yeah. Is Chuck around? Chuck's always around. Well, uh, I need to discuss business with him. Just a real quick thing. Thanks. 
talk to you later. Busy tonight, huh? Oh, yeah, look at it. Bunch of happy troops, huh? That's right. You remember the lovely kitten, don't you? Yeah, how you doing? How's your how golf you? game? It's better since last time, I'll tell you that. I hope so. <laughs> What's up? Oh, something for you. What's this? The matches I found on a client of mine in the car the uh, other day. So, who's the client? Governor's daughter. Why don't you go powder your nose, baby? Okay. Well, I've never seen her in here, but I think uh, one of the dancers might know her. Who would that be? Megan. You're kidding. Nope. I mean, my ex-girlfriend knows the governor's daughter. Yeah. I think so. How long has she been a client of yours? About four days now, she's been busting our balls trying to catch up with a guy who she thinks dropped the governor's son off the river bridge last year. Who she think it was? The governor. No shit. That's right. She says he did it. I think she's mentally ill. She uh, doesn't have a record. I thought it was concluded that he got drunk and fell off the bridge. It was. She thinks otherwise. Sorry to put you in any trouble, Lana. No, 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 no. It's just, it's just kind of strange. The only thing I can figure out is Megan must have left these uh, in the car. She's in the back. You want to talk to her? I appreciate it. Hey, no problem. You know, I'm always glad to improve your business, buddy. God knows I've improved yours occasionally. Yeah, yeah counting the times I had to kick your ass out of here because you announced you're going to fuck all the women before 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> One of my finer moments. I was just a kid. You're still a kid, Jack. Did you say she's back there? Oh, yeah. If I were you, I'd watch my ass. She's pissed. Really pissed. I got her. Go, go, go for it. You got to see you. Good to see you. It isn't another one of the boss's friends coming to ask me out to dinner. See, so you must be number four. You know, five this week. What do you want, Kellerman? Meg, uh, you of all people know that I enjoy a theatrical confrontation. And I appreciate it. Sometimes you're most creative when it comes to that. Uh, I even know that the exotic dancer is recognized as a member of the artistic community. Or maybe you're just expanding your verbal horizons. How have you been, anyway? See? That's why it never worked. It never would have worked out either. Because you know why? You're always trying to intellectualize everything I say to you. You don't have to turn everything I say into a parable. You didn't even graduate from high school, for Christ's sake. I know. But, uh, I read. Still peeking in windows, huh? Yeah, I have, uh, two new associates. Oh, well, this I gotta see. Well, uh... Speaking of business, that's why I'm here. I'm really intrigued. Yeah, uh, Chuck tells me you know the governor's daughter. Met her, don't know her. Where'd you meet her? There's some ritzy party downtown. Um, governor's ball or something like that. Why all the questions? She's a client of mine. I found a book of uh, Chuck's club matches on her. Wondered if uh, you, by chance, caught a glimpse of her in here. Well, you're moving up as far as clients are concerned, but no, I've never seen her in here. Never? Not that I can recall. I suppose I'm entitled to ask why she is a client of yours. Well, she's just paranoid, you know? She's, uh, scared somebody's after her. She, it's my job to keep up with her. You still live in that apartment? Yeah. You should come by. Next weekend? <laughs> oh, Kellerman, wait a minute. How do you know I'm not involved with somebody? If you were, you wouldn't have asked that question. It's not you. You'd come to my apartment whether or not you were involved. That's why I like you. You're not shallow. Well, I see you've been working really hard on your charm. 
Since you gave it all you had, I'll think about it and call you. Other than that, I'm up in 10 minutes, so you better go. Well, <clears throat> I enjoy a good sword fight every now and then. Uh, this has been nice. Goodbye, Kellerman. <laughs> sword fight, he is getting way too complex. <laughs> I hated that I had to lie to Jack. Frankly, I didn't have any choice, and Jack didn't really give a shit. Of course he knew I lied, that's his job. Jack knew, as I did, that when he pays a visit to my dressing room, he wasn't going to come out until he had his knob waxed at least three times. Besides, the chemistry between Jack and Megan was excellent. They were into some strange libidos. Something about she's supposed to act pissed and play a language game that turns Jack on because it reminds him of all of his ex-wives. Hell, I don't know. He's lucky because he went through all that marriage had to offer at an extremely young age, and let's just say that monogamy is not within Jack's world of view philosophy. It's not in mine either, for that matter. What was that Caesar said? I came, I saw, I conquered. Well, that's similar to Jack's life motto, except he says, I came, I saw, and I fucked. Not necessarily in that order. So Jack and I aren't monogamous, and I wouldn't say you were wrong if you said we weren't part of the feminist movement either. And isn't it ironic that most feminists are not that feminine? Anyway, my point is, Jack and I have an understanding about life that enables us to rationalize all the bullshit mutually. That's logic, my friends. I wouldn't lie to you. He's fucked every woman in my club at one time or another. And I wouldn't call that womanizing. I call it taking complete advantage of the situation. Now, Chief Faulkner is totally different from Jack and I. He's happily married and has a family. That's something Jack and I can't afford. And we'll never be able to because we've seen too much already and the desire to see more will probably never be tame enough for that kind of responsibility. Oh, yeah, he knew about kitten before that gob fiasco. They think I don't know, and I guess that makes it more exciting. The truth is, I do know more than what I told Jack, and I just hope my reluctance to tell all won't ruin the friendship and just look like a guy doing his best patron dirt. But I have a sneaking suspicion that right now, Jack is in an orgasmic bliss and couldn't give a shit. And frankly, in a couple of hours, neither will I. Ha, ha, ha.
Jack. You've been here for hours. What do you got? Keith, our dear governor is a murderer. But I can't prove it. Uh, it's over. I don't want another word of it spoken in my office. Wait a minute, Jack. How the hell do you know that? Because if he didn't, she did. And I know she didn't do it. Jack, are you sure? She didn't do it! Good night. Guys, sorry I yelled. All right, I'm sorry again. This is just it's it's too okay. much. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. See you Monday. I'm gonna walk out. Hey boss, it's about six o'clock. I'm home fighting off reporters. Actually, I have an interesting lead on where the governor might be getting his money from. Give me a call. Bye. Beamer, for all I know, the guy inherited it. What do I know? I'm tired. Hey, Kellerman, this is Megan. Give me a call when you get in. Do me a favor and don't get drunk before you call. You talk too much. Bye. Say, Jack, this is Chuck. I'm at the house. Uh... Listen, I've given some thought to what we discussed in the club and all the questions that you ask. I um, think maybe we should discuss it further. Why don't we meet in the park downtown tomorrow? Oh, uh, say about noon. Mm -hmm. Do me a favor and leave Chief Faulkner out of it. All right, I'll see you. Hello? Tell me about it. Jack, I'm not proud of the fact that I lied to you. I don't know what made me do it. I guess I was afraid to stick my neck out because of all the gossip and bad publicity was coming down, and I guess I was afraid my business was going to be ruined. I understand, Chuck. I'm the same way. We have to be discreet about our businesses. They're not ready for us, you know? Guess what happened? The governor came in a club, I guess, about uh, 2 o'clock in the morning. Really screwed up. He had a glazed look on his face like he wasn't even there. Well, yeah. Double bourbon on the rocks. And a picture of this lovely young lady 
in a bikini. Well, you should have been here an hour ago, and you could have taken one. I would have loved to have been here. But I had some financial loose ends to tie. Got a business yet? As of tonight, I'm no longer part of any business at all. I saw this son of a bitch up close, Jack. He had a sick look on his face. I mean, he didn't even blink, not once. He was awake. Money is king. Money is God. God worshipped by selfish, selfish nabobs. I hate nabobs. That's some pretty deep shit, honey. But I guess it pays the rent, huh? What's a nabob? The, na the nabobs. I think I'm in a world where a piece of green paper decides worth. I know what I'm worth. It's more than just a shitty piece of green paper. Okay, look, you have to finish your drink. I've got to close. You finish my drink, buddy. What's the matter? You don't believe me? We didn't say anything. I just let it go. Then he left. The next day I read about his son. What happened to Tara? She was killed a couple of months after that. How'd she die? Oh, supposedly she was killed by her boyfriend in her apartment. But I don't buy that. I don't buy it. Not at all. God, maybe if I'd have said something, she'd still be alive. But I didn't. I don't know, Jack. I sometimes wonder if the governor even remembers me or if he was even in the club that night. I have been tearing my damn asshole out about it for the last year. I know. I know he did it. How in the hell you know that? If he didn't, the daughter did, and I know she didn't do it. How in the hell do you go about prosecuting a governor? Ah. Christ, Chuck, you know, I don't know. Uh, if I do get enough evidence, I'll go through Faulkner. Yeah. Then the local DA, then the state. Problem is, the governor is the state. You got that right. You know, guys like that get off on a technicality at the drop of a hat. It'd be a total non-event. Testify. What? Testify. No way! What in the fuck are you coming here, man, if you're not going to fucking help out? You're spilling your guts to me and you're going to tell me you're not going to help me? Hey, look, Jack, I just want to get this off my chest. I don't want to get involved. Well, if you want to get it off your chest, man, why don't you help? You know, do it for me. Do it for our friendship. That's worth something, isn't it? You know how long a trial lasts? I don't have that kind of time. What's going to happen to my business? I'll compensate your business. How? The whole works on my bill. Everything? Everything. All right, Jack, I'll do it for you. But I'm not going to do anything until I have to do it. I wouldn't have it any other way, Chuck. You've scraped me off the floor of your club several times. I owe you plenty. You are one manipulating little bastard. Do you know that? Yeah. The difference is I get paid to be a manipulating little bastard. Let's go have a real drink, huh? OK. No, Chuck, I can't keep up with Megan. The first time we met, we talked about swordfish, for Christ's sake. She wouldn't shut up. That was on joint number four or something. I don't know. don't remember. So I'm curious. Besides, somebody had to keep the conversation going. Touche. See that glass? Buck Flower gave me that a long time. No kidding. The Buck Flower? Yeah, he was uh, in all those old dirty moves. Yeah. 
I remember, I remember. Yeah, he got so old, they stopped making him take his clothes off. He? <laughs> <laughs> the movie to go out and rent one of his movies. Hey, you guys, I need to go. Well, wait one minute, I want to talk to you. Make it quick. Chuck, that new guy's here. Oh, okay. Get there in a minute. Jack, I got to do a job interview. Kitten, time for you to get up there and take your clothes off, go to work. You're going to miss my dance? No, I'll be back. I'm always watching. You know that. I'll see you later. Take your time. Okay. What? I still love you. I don't believe this. You're drunk. I am not drunk. I've only had two drinks. I've got to go. Why is it every time I spill my guts to you, you accuse me of being drunk? I'm drunk. Because it's the only time you will, and you know it. You tell me, uh, you're a damn fine bartender. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the reason, yeah. Well, quit. What's the other reason? Look, Kellerman, if I don't leave now, I'm out of a job, okay? Okay, I understand. Come on, knock them dead, kid. Jack, look, they're sweaty animals, okay? I'm doing this for the rent, not a career. Your failure to recognize this is the real reason. I know that. Yeah, Jack, look, I know. I heard already. Just, just hold on. What? What the hell are you talking about? Hell, I don't know. Probably tomorrow. Oh, you want to argue about that, huh? Good. Good, I'll call you back. That was close, Chief. I know, I know. Look, look, why don't you sit down? No. Did you get a good look at this guy? Yeah. Did you get a shot on him? Yeah, in the shoulder of the bastard. Anything else? Uh, tag number? Description of the car? Fuck that. What happened last night was directly linked to the governor. And I know he killed his son. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, wait a minute. Now, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the governor's daughter has employed me for a month now. Uh. We investigated. I found a book of matches in her car, a book of Chuck's Club Matches. I called Chuck up and asked him about it. He didn't know anything. He told me she had never been in there. He'd never seen her or the governor ever. Then he calls me up a day later, says, I want to meet in the park. We meet in the park. He tells me that the governor was in the club personally. That means he was here, and that means he's a murderer. Oh, wait a minute. Of both Chuck and his son. You, you're telling me the governor hired someone to kill Chuck? He's hired some punk to do it. It was a contract hit. I've seen it a dozen times. It's like turning out a light. You don't even feel anything. All right, all right, look, look. Now, what can I do about it? Now, you can't prove that. You head up a special investigation with the DA led by me. I call the shots. We'll get enough evidence and we'll oust his ass. That's your problem, Jack. Evidence. What more do you need, Chief? Now, look, now, I love the bastard. He was a good guy and a compulsive liar. What are you talking about? I know when somebody Other lies, Other than what Chuck lying. told you, what do you have as far as usable evidence? She's given me photos. I'm meeting with Frank Temkin next week. Temkin, huh? Yeah, Temkin. He owes me a favor. All right, you come to me when you've got all that, and I'll think about it. But if you come in here talking about this between now and then, I'm going to book you, your secretary, and those two goofy fucks you got working for you. You understand? Look, we got no witnesses. None. Just a few pictures, a letter to your father riding around in his limousine, and that's it. Have you spoken to anyone about this? Yes. Who? The uh, chief of police. Hey. What did he say? He told me 
if I ever called about your brother's death again, that he would book my associates, myself, and my secretary for threatening the governor. And if we weren't such good friends, he'd have done it already. Does he have the authority to do that, though? <laughs> He's the chief of police. He can do anything he wants. You have to face reality. You have no guts. I had you figured out all wrong. You have a reputation in this town, but you have no courage to back it up. All you do all day is spy on spouses cheating on their wives and husbands with their next door neighbor. You're nothing but a, a glorified legal peeping Tom. Why don't you live with that for a while? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Kevin. What about the limo driver? My father always travels in a black limo with a driver named Cecil. Did you even check him out? Did you even try to contact him? I have tried to contact him. That's my job. What do you think he's going to say? Sure, I'll come to town, risk my family's life, not to mention my life, just lock some old nut up in jail. Hey, you tell me, Miss Chambers, what you want me to do. I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to find Cecil and I want you to bring him back here. And I want you to talk to the chief of police. If you, if you don't do this, I'll find somebody else. I don't want that. Is that what you want? Why me? I mean, what, what's... Are you going to help me or not? My father is so evil, he gets away with everything and he's still the governor. It's up to you. Gentlemen? Yes? I'm Frank Temkin. You wanted to see me? Yeah, you're late. I had to make sure I wasn't followed. Besides, I picked a hell of a place to meet. Yeah, well, my office has been bugged. Really? No shit. Well, how's the private eye business in the capital city? Oh, I'm getting rich as I sit here. <laughs> well, uh, Frank, let's cut the chase and get right to the outcome. Did the governor kill his son? Only an idiot asked why. What's that supposed to mean? What do you think, Kellerman? I think he did it. I know he did it. But I don't think I can pursue it. <laughs> you've got no choice, my friend. You're into it up to your ass. Besides, you've got enough evidence. Yeah, like what? Why did you call me here? You got phone numbers, affidavits, addresses, everything you need. Besides, there's his daughter. Yeah, his daughter. She got to you, didn't she? Very much so. How would you know? I know Chambers, son of a bitch. Well, hell, Frank, you're the best. Why didn't she ask you? She did. I turned her down. You're kidding. Why? Because I'm a coward. And I'm not in love with her. Besides, you've got everything you need. Evidence. There's two more witnesses in there, too. Don't you understand, Frank? It ain't the evidence. It's me. I walk into a public place and they laugh at me. Why? Because they think I'm crazy. You know, I should have listened to my father when he said, never miss a chance to keep your mouth shut. 
Look around you. What do you see? Nothing. That's because you're nothing. You've never made a difference. If for no other reason, do it for her. Why don't you join me? Testify. <laughs> I'm out of this business, buddy. I had my chance. I blew it. Look. Just go for it. You might be able to do some good. Look, my friend. I've got to go. This is the last time I'm going to be seeing you. You got everything you need right there. Seize the day. In short, I revered Temkin. He was a quintessential example of what the real truth looks like. He got into the business because he searched for the truth. I got into it because being a policeman wasn't for me. And because I think I watched Chinatown one too many times. I took his advice and set up an appointment with the governor at an innocuous location. I was going to confront him. Basically, I was scared shitless. Governor, what a pleasure it is. I'm sorry to pull you out of your busy schedule here. I appreciate it. I don't have long just passing through, really. Just a few questions. I'm listening, Mr. Kellerman. Where were you the night your son died? Well, in the Capitol, actually. Sleep, probably. Such an unfortunate thing. I love Jonathan. He just had problems beyond my control. Your daughter's been to see me several times, and uh, she thinks for some reason that you're somehow involved. It was a suicide, Mr. Kellerman. My daughter's a disturbed young woman. I don't know what she's put into that head of yours, but I can assure you it's a fabrication. Why would she do that, Governor? I mean, what... As I said, she is disturbed. With all due respect, Governor, uh... I have witnesses that say you were here in town the night of the murder. Murder, Mr. Kellerman? That's right, Governor. I've been in contact with your ex limo driver, Cecil, for the past week now. And he swears to me that you were not only here that night, but that you went to that bar, got your son drunk, drove for the river bridge, and dropped him in. Why? Because he was blackmailing you for money. Mr. Kellerman. And then, he drove to the nearest plane field, paid him $100,000 in cash to shut up. Just admit to it, Governor, and I promise you, you won't do any time, but I will not allow you to remain governor of the state any longer. Mr. Kellerman, my daughter's insane. 
She'll do anything to convince anyone to bring Daddy down. Now this brings an end to this contorted and ridiculous conversation. You think you're gonna get away with this? You have no idea what you are doing. I think so. This is my living. Now I will bust your ass for killing your son. Do you hear me? You may think you know who you are dealing with, but believe me, you don't. Is that a threat? You have no idea. Chief Faulkner, have I got a job for you. How you doing? You bet. Come on in. As long as you've got the mileage covered. Look, I don't have long. I'm uh, meeting with the limo driver tomorrow and I've got to get back. That's great. What about the chief of police? Yeah, him too. Would you like some scotch? Yeah, that'd be great. Mind if I smoke? Actually, I do. What can I say? This is a nice place you've got here. Thanks. Did your father own it? Take a wild, uneducated guess. Yes? Yes, he owns damn near everything else in the state, too. I don't want to bust up the party or nothing, but why don't you leave here, it seems. That's easy for you to say. That wasn't easy for me to say. I would never survive out there. Your brother did. Well, I'm sorry. It's all right. Um, did you have any real trouble finding Cecil? No. Good. Guess that's what I pay you for. Yep. Um, you know I met with your father yesterday. Yes, I know. One sick man and a liar, if you know what I mean. Nail him. It's all that matters. Just nail him. I think you need protection. I can have Chief Faulkner arrange it. Uh, I really appreciate that, but I'll be fine. Is there any reason why you not might need money? <laughs> Does it look like I need money? No. No? Uh... All I wanted, all I want, is for you to be okay. I don't think I could stand it if anything happened to you. I appreciate it, but you're a private eye. I'm a case. Let's just keep it that way, okay? Well, I'm meeting with Cecil and uh, the chief of police tomorrow, and uh, we'll call you and 
let you know what we're gonna do. Great. Um, any you can't do it. You, you can't. weren't listening to. Um, you better leave. Please. You sure? Yes. Please get out. See you around. I was in hell. I didn't want to be a hero. I just wanted to nurture the last bit of morals and secular ethics I had in me. I knew that so far in my life I had asked too many questions. And you know, questions are a harmful invasion to people because they usually don't see their intention. It's just simply an attempt by the questioner to gain a bit of knowledge for themselves so that they can enjoy life better through their better understanding of things. Well, I knew one thing. I loved her. I didn't admire her, but I loved her. If I had it my way, I'd leave the governor alone and take her to the Florida Keys and be done with it. Yeah, and I know how that sounds, but it's the plain and simple truth. And that's all. I ain't nobody's hero. This better be good, Irish. I needed my sleep today. 7.30 Saturday morning coffee stinks no matter how good they make it. You don't have to yell, Chief. You ever heard the expression, morning people rule the world? Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, you got something for me or not? Yeah, and you might even find some of it interesting. This is Cecil Bloodhorn, our dear governor's ex-limo driver. How you doing? Chief? Chief, he's my only link to the real truth. He's agreed to be here, take us through the night step by step. I know. The governor was here to settle problems with his kid who used to live here. I was instructed to pick up his son and take him to that restaurant where his father was waiting. So I did. But when I got back to the bar, I noticed the governor was without his bodyguards. Now, it's not unusual for the governor to, to be without his bodyguard, but this guy went to him with constantly. I didn't think nothing of it. I just thought he wanted to be alone with his son. I will pass to nothing. So I, I moved around in front of the place to see what was going on. First, everything seemed to be fine. You know, in fact, it looked like we were having a good time. I guess about another hour passed. I drove around in front and they were in one hell of an argument. I mean, I knew they'd had a lot to drink, but the sun was sloppy. The governor was yelling curse words at his son and saying things like, your time is up, and you know, the free ride is over. I mean, he literally kicked his son into the car. It scared me, because I never saw the governor like this. He yells at me, get us out of here, take me to the nearest airport. I think his son was saying something I, I just didn't understand, you know.
I'll tell you, Mr. Cole. I never heard words come out of a man's mouth like that before. It was unbelievable. By this time, the son was unconscious. That's when he went to the river bridge, right? That's right. Let's go there. You were here. Yeah, that's right. I mean, through all the yelling, when we got here, the governor wanted me to pull over. First, I hesitated, because, hell, it, it's a bridge. But I didn't say anything. I stopped it. The governor said something vague. And that's when it happened. It's all right, Cecil. Go ahead. Take it easy. He gets out of the car. Dragging his arm behind him, you know, cursing. He, he, he's just in a rambling rage. Then he drags his arm to the leg. The governor threw his arm over the side. Didn't say anything. I to do anything. I don't know why, I just couldn't. Then there was this horrible silence. I just drove around in a daze. I mean, I was confused. Then the governor says to me after about a half an hour, Cecil, I need a drink. So I drove him to the nearest bar about five miles from town. He got out and went in for about five minutes. And I, I just sat there. And I was paralyzed. I, it was terrifying. Then he calmly gets into the car and tells me to take him to the nearest airport. to a private airport and he gets out and hands me a hundred thousand dollars in cash. He said if I ever spoke, he'd have me killed. And I believed him. It's all right, Cecil. Chief Faulkner will take care of everything. We'll protect you. Look, uh, Jack, could I have a moment alone with you? Mr. Kellerman. I have your word. That's all you need, Cecil. You know, Chief, he ain't lying. No, he ain't lying. Well, any lawyer in the world could discredit him. I mean, I mean no, the, the guy illegally took the hundred grand. Got a shock for you, Chief. The guy still has the money. You expect me to go to the You're DA? Damn with right, this? I do. You're crazy Irish. Maybe. I mean, you got the demons running all through you. The rest of the game. Hey, Irish. Next golf game's 50 bucks a hole. Hey, <laughs> you're crazy, Chief. Uh, 
I know what kind of money you make. Uh, I don't know, Chief. I'd be too rich for me, you know. Business ain't no good. Let's get out of here, okay? Man, this place gives me creep. Take it easy, Caesar. Yeah, you got the chief of police in the car. All right. Don't worry, we're gonna look after you. Man, this place gives me the spooks, okay? We'll be fine. Yeah. Backing up, pal, huh? What the hell is it now? You yeah. back up. Tell him to back up. Yes. Yes. Very good. It's done. 